Hi, this is Swati Sila from the Software Testing Help.com team. And in this segment, we'll talk about verification versus validation. This is a very, very simple concept, but for some reason, there's a lot of confusion around it. And also, it's one of the interviewer's favorite questions. So we'll see all about it. And this topic is best explained or, you know, best understood with the help of vModel. And we're going to take a look at that. Um, typically, when we address this topic in our um, software testing helps manual testing classes, a um, lot of our students benefit from a very, very simple real-life example here. It is uh, silly to an extent, so again, at the risk of sounding, um, you know, um, silly, I'm still going to go ahead and give that example first, and then we'll go ahead and talk about it in technical terms. Um, so. Imagine this scenario, you actually, you know, go to a diner, we all do, um, say you've ordered some pancakes. And um, when the waiter brings your order out, you don't really have to eat it to actually make sure that they got it right or not. I mean, eventually you do have to, but the very first point or, you know, checkpoint for you to make sure that your order is correct or not is to first see that it smells right, it looks right, correct? At this point, you don't have to eat it to actually say whether the, you know, um, the outcome or your order is correct or not. But at the end of it, you really have to eat it to make sure that it is indeed correct. So making sure that you know, uh, a certain software product is going to be built or being built in the right way or not by not actually testing it by making sure, uh, by reading the document and reviewing all of its, uh, you know, all of the related content, that's verification. Verification does not mean that you physically have an application, provide an input, and arrive at the output. On the other hand, validation is, you know, the physical form of testing that we all perform by providing an input, performing a certain sequence of steps, and arriving at the output. So that's basically a very high-level definition of verification and validation. We will take a look at each one of uh, these two techniques in detail. Um, as I said, the best way to understand verification and validation is with the help of the V module. Now, on the left-hand side of the V module, it starts with the requirement analysis. So typically, at that point of time, the requirements that we're talking about are the business requirements. And once all the business requirements are gathered, analyzed, and, you know, uh, finalized, the second step is where the system design takes place. Now, at the stage of system design, what we are really working on is, you know, translation of the business requirements into system requirements. So we have a business requirements from which the system requirements are derived, correct? High-level system design. Now, what is this derivation? Now, if the business requirement is that you should be able to buy, um, a customer should be able to buy a commodity from your website, which means, let's say it's an e-commerce site. So the business requirement is that the customer should be able to buy stuff. Now, how does it get transformed into a system requirement? By bringing in features of the application that will enable this buying of the product. For example, first, there might be searching of the product and selecting the product. And once you select the product, you might be, you know, uh, adding it to the shopping cart, checking it out. And when you check out, there might be different payment options. And finally, payment confirmation and um, product delivery, something like that. So what is a business requirement gets transformed into a system requirement here. Now, even though that is the primary uh, operation, while we are trying to create the system requirement, the point of reference is always a business requirement. That means we derive from what we are using, I mean, what has been produced in the previous step. So when you are creating the system requirement document, not only are you consuming the business requirements document, we are also reviewing it and analyzing it. So if there were to be a business requirement that were incorrectly written in the business requirement document, during the system requirement creation, you would identify it. So even though you are really not 
testing the application, you are testing the reference documents that are going to yield into the application eventually. So by doing that, by not physically testing the application, you are uh, by performing uh, you know a, a much um, how do I put it uh, a, a much lesser you know involvement with the AUT. You have not much no involvement in, with the AUT in case the AUT is not there. But you know uh, you kind of you know verify the application by reviewing the application and even at the point of review you don't have the application in hand you're doing it based on some documentation so this sort of reading through and you know analysis this sort of you know uh, static analysis of uh, the supporting references is basically verification so verification could be um, a code review or a code walkthrough now this is now code, anything to do with code is obviously a developer's job. So code review or code walkthrough is performed by a developer and even though it is performed by the developer, it is still verification and it is still a form of testing. So this goes to prove that testing does not necessarily have to happen only you know, after you have the application. It could happen before itself. And it is not necessarily always in all circumstances performed by the testers. It could be done by the developers as well. So all sorts of code walkthroughs, code reviews, test documentation um, uh, reviews. Sorry about that. Now test documentation reviews. That is also a form of verification. Uh, all the business requirements documents, all of those re reference document reviews, uh, requirement analysis. So requirement analysis, let me give you an example. If um, you know um, a business requirement is written back, so let's say we are building a website. You know we are building a website for all registered customers of a company. And this company says that uh, we are supposed to say that we will instruct the users to not use a password that they use on their other site. Say, if, say for example, I have a Yahoo account and now uh, this company's website is XYZ, some account, okay? And the business requirement or, you know, some sort of a requirement says that my Yahoo email, my Yahoo email password cannot be the same password that I used to log into X. Now, if this is the requirement, again, nobody is that dumb to, you know, uh, actually record a requirement like that. But in the event that they do, when you perform a requirement analysis, you kind of get the picture that this is a kind of best practice that you can suggest to the user, but you cannot impose it on the level of, you know, creating a system and having that sort of a checkpoint out there. So while you are reviewing this kind of a requirement, you know that this is something that cannot be built. So eventually that cannot be tested. So it's not a feasible requirement. But how did you know that it's not a feasible requirement? Have you built the site, tested it, and then realized? Not really, correct? Even before the website was there, you kind of analyzed it, you kind of had a conceptual idea, and you realized that this is not a feasible requirement. So this sort of, um, you know, not a very hands-on approach to testing, um, you know, not really having the application, physical application in hand, and uh, still being able to check at a certain point whether things are going correctly or not is verification. And um, verification, uh, again, the best example, the best way in which verification can be described is from the CST book. So I'm quoting this from the uh, CST syllabus. It says that verification is all about, sorry, did we build the right product? So verification is all about did we build the right product and validation is all about did we build the product right. Now coming back to our main model, if you see here, when we perform the requirement analysis and have the BRD and we move on to the system design, we go back one step while you're creating a system design document, you would verify the requirements that are created in the previous step. Similarly, when the design is cre getting created, 
you would verify the system design. And when the module design is going on, you would verify the architecture. When coding is going on, the module design gets verified. So on the left hand side of the way module is all the verification activities that go on. In addition to this, we also have a test case review process, a test documentation review process, and the code walkthroughs. All of that form the verification techniques. Um, another question that comes up when we are discussing verification and validation is, which of these is testing? Is verification testing, validation testing? Actually, testing is a combination of both. Both verification and validation, it takes two Vs for one T. One testing takes two Vs, verification and the validation. Now coming to validation. Validation is something that we all know really, really well. Validation is all about having a website, uh, you know, having an application that you're testing. It could be a website, it could be a Windows app or anything else. And how would you test it? Say, for example, I'm testing the go-to training software and I have to create a new uh, training. What I would do is I would click on the uh, scheduler training, enter the training name, enter a description or, you know, just choose some stuff, click on the schedule. Now, has it created the schedule for me or not? So this is very, very dynamic, um, which means I'm going to get a lot of hands-on interaction with my application. I'm going to uh, perform certain sequence of steps on my application, uh, provide the data, validate the output, and make sure that it is in accordance to the requirements. So verification is also called the static testing methodology, and validation is called the uh, dynamic testing methodology. Thank you.